You've tuned in to Family Church Radio with Pastor Jimmy Scroggins of Family Church. Join us as Pastor Jimmy teaches through the Bible. We cannot fix it for ourselves. And the reason you know you can't fix it for yourself is if you were going to fix it for yourself, you would have already done that. But now you need somebody greater than you to do something for you that you cannot do for yourself. And you need to answer this question, is God able to do it or am I wasting my time in here? Is God able to help me or am I wasting my time in here? Every one of us will face something like that in our lives. It may be a medical issue, a relationship, financial problem, or some other major issue. The list of possibilities is long and diverse. As we face these things, we might find ourselves wondering why God is letting us go through it. We may be at the end of our rope and crying out for a lifeline. In today's message, Pastor Jimmy will help us understand where God is in all of this and what we can expect of our loving Creator as we face these trials. Well, let's join Pastor Jimmy in the book of Luke, chapter 7. As he begins his message, Jesus is able to heal. Today we're going to look at Luke chapter 7 and we're going to ask this question, is Jesus able? Now I know some of you guys are super religious, Uh, you're SEAL Team Special Forces Christians, you guys have been going to church your entire lives, you know everything about the Bible. So if I say, is Jesus able? You're like, of course Jesus is able. But I also know that in this room, uh, there are some of you who just aren't very religious at all. Some of you uh, came today, maybe you came because you go to PBA. And if you go to PBA, we are super glad that you are here. I'm personally glad that you're here. I'm a trustee at Palm Beach Atlantic University. Um, I I have a son that graduated from PBA. I have a daughter-in-law that graduated from PBA. And I have a daughter who is a freshman at PBA. So I have a lot of my life invested in Palm Beach Atlantic University. So we're really glad that you are here. But some of you came and you came, you came from PBA today because we've given you a free meal and chapel credit. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? And so I know you love Jesus and everything. Some of you, some of you know, some of you are like, hey, I'm really not even that religious. Some of you just had a really weird experience because you've never been to a church exactly like this. And this is different for you. And that's okay. Because the real thing that you need to figure out in your life is, is God really able to do what he says he can do? Can God really help you? Because every single one of us, regardless of our age or life stage, every single one of us has things in our lives that we cannot fix on our own. There are things that are happening to us that aren't our fault. There are consequences of choices we've made. And now we have a problem. Maybe it's a medical problem, a a relationship problem, a family problem. We have an issue, and we cannot fix it for ourselves. And the reason you know you can't fix it for yourself is if you were going to fix it for yourself, you would have already done that. But now you need somebody greater than you to do something for you that you cannot do for yourself. And you need to answer this question, is God able to do it, or am I wasting my time in here? Is God able to help me, or am I wasting my time in here. There's all kinds of things that make you feel that way. You have a medical issue and you need healing. That can make you feel like you're trying to pray and maybe you don't know how to ask God, but God's not doing it. Maybe some of you uh, in our church family, you want to have a baby and you've been trying and you've done everything that you know to do, but it's just not happening. And infertility can be very discouraging and you just, you just don't even know how to ask God anymore. Some of you have broken relationships that you want to be repaired. You want that relationship to be healed, but it's such a struggle and it's so hard and you just don't know if you're going to make it unless God does something really special. Some of you deal with addiction and mental health issues and anxiety and depression and you want something to happen, but if you were going to fix it yourself, you'd have done it a long time ago and you need God to do something, but you've asked him so many times and it just seems like it's It's not happening. Is it even okay to keep asking God? Can God do what we need him to do? Will he do it? Is he inclined to do it? And I want to tell you a story today from the Bible about when Jesus healed a guy. Jesus healed this guy miraculously. And this is a guy that Jesus didn't know. It's a guy that Jesus never actually saw, not even in the story. He never sees him. He doesn't know him. He doesn't talk to him. But Jesus miraculously intervenes and heals this 
person. And hopefully this will encourage you. So let's read from the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, the first 10 verses, and then we'll talk about what we can learn. Here's what the Word of God says. After he, Jesus, had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word, And let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turning to the crowd that followed him, said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. This is a really remarkable story. Let me tell you why. Right before this story, Jesus preached a famous sermon. It's called the Sermon on the Plain. I know some of you thought I was going to say Mount, but this is the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. The Sermon on the Plain is in the Gospel of Luke. He preaches this famous sermon, the Sermon on the Plain, but in this sermon, he says some really tough things. That's the sermon where Jesus says, uh, if someone strikes you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. That's where Jesus says uh, you should love your enemies. That's where Jesus says, if someone curses you, you bless them. Those are things that are very, very difficult for us to do, but Jesus challenged his disciples to do it. So when the crowd hears Jesus say, love your enemies, for a first century Jewish person living in Palestine, the most natural enemy in the world is a Roman soldier. The Roman soldiers were occupying Palestine. The Roman soldiers were abusing the women and the children in Palestine. The Roman soldiers were taking advantage of their power by taking bribes and overtaxing people. So they were financially enriching themselves on the backs of the Jewish people. So the Jewish people hated the Roman soldiers. They hated their guts. And there were Roman soldiers stationed in every town, in every village, in every city. This Roman soldier happened to be stationed in Capernaum, this little village on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee, on the northern end of Israel. And this is where this Roman soldier lives and where he operates. But apparently, this particular Roman soldier was kinder and gentler than most others. This particular Roman officer, a junior level military grade officer, this particular officer uh, cared for the people. He actually wanted to encourage them in their religion. And so he gave the money to build the local synagogue. So he's probably a good and kind man. And this centurion also understood the principle of authority. Is there anybody here, either you or your parents served in the military. Anybody like that? Raise your hands high. You or your parents served in the military. If you've ever served, some of you guys joined the military because you got sick and tired of your parents telling you what to do, so you joined the Marines or whatever, and they really helped you with that. So so the way that it works, the Roman the Roman military was organized a certain way. Uh, it's from top to bottom. The Roman legion was the largest unit of force and had about 4,800 men in a legion. A legion was made up of 10 cohorts with 480 men apiece in a cohort. A century had 80 men, and so so six centuries made a cohort, and then a tent group had eight men. So a century was was made up of 10 tent groups. So the centurion was over about 80 men. He was a junior-level officer, but an officer nonetheless, responsible for 80 men, but he also had officers over him that he reported up to. That's why he says, I'm a man under authority, but I'm a man in authority. But when the centurion sends these different servants and representatives to go meet with Jesus, what the centurion didn't understand was that in the kingdom of God, when someone belongs to God, when you are in the family of God, 
you have an org chart that doesn't look like the Roman military. The org chart looks like this. Father, child, that's it. That's the organizational chart. If you were a child of God, you don't have to send intermediaries back and forth to God to talk to God for you. You can talk to God all by yourself and you can ask God about anything that's going on in your life. The Bible says this in many different ways. For instance, the Bible says there is no mediator between God and man except the man, Christ Jesus. The Bible says that God, that Jesus no longer calls us servants. He calls us friends. The Bible says that if we're children of God, if we've received Jesus by faith, we can boldly approach the throne of grace. The Bible says that we as Christians have the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity living in us. The Bible says that when you receive Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus comes to live in your heart. And that means that you have, if you're a child of God, direct access to God for yourself. You don't need a better Christian to ask God. You don't need a priest to ask God. You don't need a pastor to ask God. You can talk to God yourself if you are a child of God. If you're gonna take some notes, what can we learn from this text? What can we learn about healing and asking God and God helping us? So there's one thing, one, I would like you to say this. Jesus loves every person from every place. Jesus loves every person from every place. Did you know that Family Church is a family of neighborhood churches across three South Florida counties? Our heart is to take the gospel to every person in every neighborhood in South Florida. If you'd like to learn more, look up gofamilychurch.org. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram too. We'd love for you to join the conversation and be part of our community. Now let's get back to today's message from Pastor Jimmy Scroggins right here on Family Church Radio. When you read the Bible, you read about a multiplicity of cultures. You read about people from a multiplicity of backgrounds. And this is a multicultural story. You've got the Jewish leaders. So you've got class. They're kind of upper class in the Jewish system, but they're ethnic Jews. You've got a Gentile servant who works for this centurion. You've got a Roman soldier, probably from Syria, maybe from Italy, we don't know. A Roman soldier. You've got these crowds. So Jesus is making his appeal and connecting with a variety of people from a multiplicity of backgrounds. And when you read the Gospels, you see that's what Jesus does. He's always inviting people in who feel left out. That's why you read the Gospels. There there are lame people who are left behind by Jewish society, and Jesus pulls them in. There are blind people who are left out because they cannot see, and Jesus pulls them in. There are people who are Gentiles. They would not be accepted in Jewish society, and Jesus pulls them in. There are tax collectors who've been rejected by Jewish society, and Jesus pulls them in. That's what he does. There are demon-possessed people who are considered crazy by Jewish society, but Jesus pulls them in. He pulls in this Roman soldier, a Gentile, and that validates what he just said a few days before when he said, love your enemies. And somehow this Roman soldier believed that Jesus would love him. Do you? This Roman soldier believed that Jesus would love him. Do you? Because the Roman soldier goes to him and says, the Roman soldier probably heard him preach sermons. Maybe the Roman soldier had been there when Jesus healed the lame or the paralytic. Maybe the Roman soldier had heard Jesus teach and just had been in the environment where Jesus was and he knew, I've got a problem. I'm going to go to the one who cares about all kinds of people and let them fix it. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you too. And there are people in this room right now from different backgrounds. Uh, We are different ages. We come from different places. Some of us were born in different countries. Our skin has different amounts of melanin in it. And I want you to know that Jesus loves every single one of us from every neighborhood and every place, every language and every race, rich or poor, gay or straight, male or female, young or old. Jesus loves all of us. And if anyone will come to Jesus, repent of their sins and believe in him, all of us can be forgiven for our sins and changed. Jesus is for every person. And so is family church. This is a church that is here for every person. There should not be one person in this city. There should not be one person who would come to this church and feel like they're going to be pushed down and pushed out because what we do at Family Church is what Jesus does. We want to pull people in and lift people up. It's so important. When I was, when I was a kid, we learned this song and it's politically incorrect now and I don't think we're allowed to sing it anymore, but the song, it said this, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. 
red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. He said, we don't sing that anymore because we don't like to assign colors to everybody because that's not really the color that anybody is. I know. I mean, this is white. Well, I kind of am. I'm kind of close. I know. (laughs) Never mind. Anyways, we want you to know, and Jesus wants you to know, and Jesus wanted the Roman soldier to know that Jesus is for everybody. He's for every person from every place, every language, and every race. Number two on your notes, we see from this story that Jesus has authority over all things. Jesus has authority over all things. This centurion, this Roman soldier, was a man of authority who was under authority. He understood earthly authority, and the earthly authority told him something about heavenly authority. Now, when you say the word authority in today's society, some people already get triggered and you haven't even said anything. You just said authority and people are upset because some people abuse authority. I mean, some moms and dads abuse authority. Some school officials abuse authority. Some pastors abuse authority. Teachers abuse authority. Some police officers abuse authority. Some, some bosses at work abuse authority. Authority can be abused, no doubt. But just because some renegades and sinners abuse authority doesn't mean that the principle of authority isn't important because the principle of authority is part of how God has has built the structure of the universe. And if you spend your life resisting authority, you're spending your life resisting God because God has woven the principle of authority into the structure of the universe. You say, well, what do I mean? Well, if you read the Bible, you find out there's these different spheres of authority. Of course, God has authority over all things, but then God set up authority structures in the family or in the home. And so there is authority there. And if you are a husband and you are a father, let me tell you, the Bible says that God has made you the head of your home. It doesn't mean you're better than the other people in your home. It doesn't mean the other people in your home are there to serve you like you're the king and they're the servants. It means you have a special position. Dads, you have a special position of responsibility and authority in your homes. And all you PBA guys, You want to get married one day. You want to have kids one day. If you do that, you are accepting a special position of authority and responsibility in your home that you should not take lightly. You say, yeah, I can't be responsible for everything that goes on in my home. You're right. Because there are things that are going to go on in your home with your spouse, with your kids, and it's not going to be your fault, and there's really nothing you can do about it. But if you are a husband and a father, it's not all your fault. It is all your responsibility. You are responsible to address it. You are responsible to fix it. That's what husbands and dads are supposed to do. Now, if you're married, you don't have to do it alone. You have a partner to help you. You have a partner who's smart. You have a partner who's wise. You have a partner who works hard. You have a partner who loves Jesus. And your partner and you together can dominate your environment. That's how it works. But there is authority within the family. Then there's authority within the church. You say, well, of course you would say that. You're the pastor of the church. I know. But there is authority within the church. Now, the way that our church works, you say, well, Jimmy, how did you get to be the pastor if you have this authority? I got to be the pastor at this church because this church invited me to come be their pastor and then they elected me, they voted on me to make me their pastor 15 years ago. That's what the church is. There are mechanisms that the church can use if they decide to get a different pastor, there's a way they can get rid of this pastor and get a different one. And I'm not gonna tell you what that is, so let's not keep talking about that. Anyway, (laughs) there's authority within the church. There really, really is. Then there's authority, the government has authority. The Bible says that God has ordained government as a sphere of authority. There is authority within the workplace. There are people who are above you on the organizational chart where you work. There are people who are beneath you on the organizational chart where you work. It doesn't make you better than the other people. It just means there's a structure of authority. That's how God intends for all of us to work. And this Roman soldier fully understood this. Now, how much authority does Jesus really have then? Well, Jesus said this about himself in Matthew chapter 28. Jesus said, All authority in heaven, the places you can't see, and earth, the places you can see. All authority has been given to me, Jesus says. He owns it all. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's every square inch. The Bible says all the silver and all of the gold belong to God. The Bible says that God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He has all authority. And one day, everyone's going to recognize it. 
Okay, now you know that right now, not everyone recognizes God's authority, but one day they will. In Philippians chapter two, the Bible says that one day at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Everybody's gonna see it one day. And in fact, the Bible says in Revelation chapter seven, that one day in heaven, people from every tribe and tongue and nation are going to be worshiping Jesus together in heaven. Why? Because he has all authority. If there's one thing you should believe, you should believe that Jesus has all authority. And if he has all authority, that means you should submit to his authority. You should come under his authority. You should surrender to his authority. You should find out what his designs are for your life. And you should align your life with God's design because he has all authority. This Roman centurion understood that. Number three, because he has all authority, that means that Jesus, number three, has the authority to heal. Jesus has the authority to heal. This centurion knew that he had some authority, but when it came to healing his servant, his number two guy, his XO, his executive officer, when it came to healing this guy, his authority didn't go that far. He couldn't, he could command people to come and go. He couldn't command disease to come and go. And something was wrong with his servant that he couldn't fix. And so Jesus has all authority. The centurion recognizes that. So in the centurion's mind, this whole conversation is very simple. He goes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, I know that if you command this disease to leave, this disease will go. I know that you can heal my friend and I'm asking you to do it. And it's very simple. If you want him to be healed, he'll be healed. If you don't, he won't. That's all I need to know. I don't need you to come over and say abracadabra. I don't need you to come over and hold my hand. I don't need you to come over and sing a song with me. I just need to know, will you heal my friend? Yes or no, because if you want to do it, you can heal him. You have the authority to heal. That's the essence of faith in Jesus. Believing that Jesus has the authority to do for you, you cannot do for yourself. He's the one who can say the word and make it happen. Do you believe that? I mean, that's really a big question. I mean, some of you came in, you, you meant to sit downstairs and you ended up in the balcony and some of you came in and you like to sit back there, but it's packed today because PBA day and you ended up on the front row, you ended up wherever, wherever you ended up. You got to believe this. Do you believe that Jesus has the, to bring the healing that you need? That's the faith that God is challenging you to have because whatever it is, you have cancer. Hey, if your parents are struggling and you want their relationship to be healed, if your marriage is struggling and you need healing in that relationship, if your mental health situation, your anxiety is a struggle and you need healing, you should ask God. He has the authority to heal. He does. He has the authority to do it. If he wants to do it, if he says it'll be done, it'll be, it'll be done. Now, I'd like to tell you that every time I pray for God to do something, he does it. That's not true. I pray for God to do things. Sometimes he does exactly what I'm asking. Sometimes he doesn't. So I can't guarantee you what God's going to do, but I can tell you this. If I ask God to do something and he doesn't do it the way I want or on the timing that I want, it's not because he doesn't have the power or the authority. It's because he has sovereignly chosen to do what he wants to do. But he has the power and authority, and I don't mind asking him. You shouldn't either. We're happy you tuned in today and are so grateful that you've become a part of our listening audience here on Family Church Radio. The voice you just heard from today's message was Pastor Jimmy Scroggins, lead pastor of Family Church, located in South Florida. If you haven't heard of us before, keep listening to get to know us a little more. We're a multicultural and multi-generational group of people striving to build families by helping them discover and pursue God's design. We want you to know you're loved by Jesus, saved by His grace, and you matter to us. As you've been listening today, perhaps you've been noticing a theme through this series in the Gospel of St. Luke. We're seeing how Jesus brought the power. He brought the juice. Jesus uses God's power to prove that He is who He says He is. Over the next several weeks, we're asking the question, is Jesus able? So, spoiler alert, the answer is yes. Jesus is able. Luke shows us how Jesus is able to beat power with power. Sure, there are spiritual forces of evil at work in this world, but Jesus is greater. Jesus is the only one who can meet all of our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. Visit our website, gofamilychurch.org, to get in touch and plan your visit with us. On our website, you'll notice a Plan Your Visit link to get started. 
Just fill out the form so someone from Family Church can get in contact with you and help you connect to God and others at Family Church. Once more, that website you want to go to to get connected is gofamilychurch.org. If you're not in the South Florida area, we encourage you to connect with us through Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Just type in at Go Family Church. Before our time ends for today, we again want to make sure you know how thankful we are for each of you. Your support in praying for this ministry, as well as listening to these teachings, has been such an encouragement to all of us. If you have anything else to share with us, feel free to do so at 561-650-7400. That number again is 561-650-7400. We trust you'll be back again for another teaching through this series with Pastor Jimmy on Family Church Radio.